ladies and gentlemen, I must ask you to offer your loudest cheer as we welcome Sushmita Mukherjee. Well, on the behalf of Exchange for Media, I'd like to thank you for taking our time from your schedule and gracing the occasion with your presence. All right. Of course, so uh, we have someone who needs no introduction at all. Uh, we all know her. We have seen her on screen close to four decades of journey, uh, 100 plus national international films, 50 plus, uh, I mean, marquee uh, TV shows. Uh, quickly, um, uh, Sushmita ji, my first question is when you, we just saw that clip also, and we all, many of us recall, uh, you know, that uh, character that you played. From that uh, kitty to the author, how do you sum up that journey? Hello, everyone. And uh, it's a huge privilege and honor for me to be here at this summit because I was hearing these ladies speak and I'm in complete awe for someone who has never held a job in her life. I speak dialogues for a living and it was fantastic. It is, so, I mean, it is so, I, I'm speechless actually, you know, when you talk the different things that people spoke and it, it resonated with me. I'll just come to your question in a minute because I really, uh, I'm, I'm so in awe of what the women leaders have done and are doing and it resonated very strongly with me, especially when they talked about, one lady talked about pivoting. You know, I mean, that's the word I was using that, you know, if it doesn't work, don't be discouraged because it happened to me because I tried to get into the social uh, uh, area for a while and I was completely thrown off. It just didn't make sense to me because everybody would come to just look at me and take pictures. I'm talking some time ago. So uh, I failed there and for the longest time I felt like a failure, you know, so, and then she talked about how you can pivot. And the other lady was talking about, I think, something like a cognitive dissonance when you, you know you're forced to do something when you come, have to comply, which you don't believe in. I think she spoke about that and that too made a lot of sense to me. So coming to your question about how I, I mean, you know, I've always been scribbler. I've always been writing, never held a job. So I was a freelancer. So to always write and I was a ghost writer because, um, you know, if I became a full-time writer, to acting because in my industry, people don't, you know, they don't like to think of you anything but an actor. But I never was a typical actor, uh, having trained at the National School of Drama. So I always wanted to kind of break the ceiling. And I started my career in 81, which is now what, 42 years. So it was, the times were different. I've actually... I've been riding the wave, the you know, the wave of four decades. Things have changed from you know the time it was black and white, and then we started you know with 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 Doordarshan, and then the satellite in the 90s, and now to this you know from the from the multiplex and now OTT and all. It's been so as uh, we move culturally, as we move in a society, we move in our thinking. And I've always uh, been very uh, not happy to be, you know, uh, stereotyped into a kind of character or just a kitty or something. I've always wanted to do different things. And obviously it's not in your hands because you're not a producer or a director. So what do you do? How do you uh, in indulge yourself or indulge in what you want to create? So you write. So that's how I became a writer. And my fourth book is to be released. And it's, I'm in awe of that too. This is how but it's something very dear to me and there is no, uh, there is no reason I, I don't have any, um, I, you know, I don't have any intent that this should work or this should not work. Like one of the ladies said, have fun. So it's been a long journey for me too. I'm running 65 myself. And at this age and stage of my life, I just have, I, I just love my life. I love my work. I learn like today was, I'm so grateful to you for calling me. I learned a lot from you. And yeah, that's it, if I answered your question. Thank you. Karan has a question. So, you know, you started Nash uh, in NST in the early 1980s. Then you set up your uh, Natak company. And then you were also helping your husband thereafter yes. in setting up his venture. Yes. So tell me about the experience from NST 
and you know the natak how you see transformation happening in these last two to three decades oh you know it's been very tough because when i came i'm a delhi girl okay so i was raised in delhi i studied here and then when i went to mumbai it was very tough because we didn't have homes phone won to tha hi nahi khair tab us zamane mein we didn't have homes and we suddenly got very famous after karamchand so it was a very strange feeling because we were very famous we didn't have cars we didn't have homes but bhaji to khareedni thi na we had to buy vegetables so you have to have vegetables and they would look at you say don't tell me free mein de dete ha free mein bhi de mere mummy ke ghar ke bahar they used to say are ye kitty ki mummy ka ghar hai so that kind of fame is not what it is today because that was very organic today we have media to help uh, create an actor a create a star in those days there was not the people the journalists would wait for you and we were also young in the game so it was always learning by process it, it wasn't obviously it wasn't digital either so it was a very different journey and you just have to go and i went through as and when i got it it wasn't like um, it I, I, you know i could afford choices there were no choices khana khana hai to prithvi theater mein 8 rupees used to get a thali sanina gupta me so many people we used to we used to serve there because uh, 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 who's a very big ad film maker pralad kakkar to he ran a cafe there to hum log wahan pahunch jate the we used to serve and we used to get art rupee ka we used to get a meal so we used to it we used to eat that so we struggled through it wasn't a struggle because when you enjoy what you do it isn't a struggle it was great we helped each other we worked together and so there we are of course i think that was a golden era the way you know people worship those characters because you had nothing else you know that time and today is a saturated overdose of media but i want to come to your book here one what i was reading uh, a briefly uh, kind of skim through it and i could sense that it is a bold topic a taboo subject that you dare to touch one what was the idea behind writing this you know and putting this these capture these stories so vividly what was the inspiration behind it what all went into writing this book actually this is not really a book it is a uh, it's my personal travel log over four decades actually so even when i was in the vanity van or i was uh, raising children uh, my children are grown up now uh, i would always be writing so even when i was nursing the children i would be writing and wo ek diary mein likh deti thi and then it's actually in the covid that this book has come out so it's been 40 years and banch is one of the stories and my publisher wanted to call it banch incomplete lives of complete women because as the panelists were saying that most of us however talented beautiful successful uh, with great family life we have we always somewhere feel incomplete because i think at the end of the day there is a patriarchal imprint in us genetically that we always look for the other the male gaze as they, as you call it to, for them to make you feel okay about yourself so somewhere or the other this tagline became a little something that you know incomplete lives of complete women you know however complete you are somewhere there's a nagging sense that you know i wish i'd done that or oh, i'm not so good as she is or he is so it's just a compilation of what i was thinking over all these years and there are a number of chapters in this book uh, any particular chapter that you specifically want to touch upon and share a bit of anecdote around it you know what because i think nobody has seen the book or read it it won't make for sense for me talking about it because it's just some this is just stories and stories which came out for me organically stories that i just felt and the and the publisher felt that it re, it could resonate because kuch kuch stories 40 years pehle likhi hai 30 years pager when we had pagers Would you have pages? I think it's a very young audience. I don't think you all know. Do you all know pages? <laughs> pages <laughs> so was pages those late days. Nineties, yeah. Nineties, I mean, yeah. yeah. So there's some stories have pages and stuff. So it's like you, if, as technology moved, as culture moved, as political, you know, climate moved, everything moved. So stories move around that because what you see outside is reflected in words, and it's a two-way mirror. It's almost like a hologram, you know. So that's how it, it happened. you know you have done uh, um three number of roles from television to movies to international movies and you see the there is a shift in the audience 
the the way they uh, see movies now and the experience which was in those years and now <laughs> what what difference you see in terms of the audience uh, uh, perception or uh, liking towards movies now in the sense that a lot of audience taste have changed and they should because change is the only constant so they should as everything changes from the time when i was a young girl living in delhi to now i'm coming back after you know six decades things have changed so taste change culture changes education changes the everything changes so obviously the audience view and taste will also change so from that time now with the ott everything is like because of the www world wide web we are all in we are all part of this huge planetary grid i would say we're all under a grid we're all are connected in whichever way i mean i am very technically sabot i mean i'm very challenged i i just barely know how to open a laptop i have issues with my eyes also so i can't do a lot i still write but i know the power that digital world has and uh, in my in my profession i can get away with it because i'm not a ceo or i'm not into you know i'm, I'm not um, I, i'm just an actor <laughs> you know he has to speak lines so as long as he can read those but i know that because of this explosion of information everything has changed like today's aapke aajkal ke bachche aur hamare mein kitna farak hai and you people are so and you people have so much information at your fingertip so it's like another lady was saying a panelist that you know it's a two way thing you teach us what we don't know and you have the humility and the courage to take our wisdom don't think just because you're smart with your fingers you're smarter than this generation because we then become the generation of grandmothers and we have many many things to share with you if you have the humility to listen and we on our part have to listen to you because you are the next baton that we are passing on so we have to listen to you and that's how i think when a mother teaches her girl something like this she passes on those things to her which enables her to fight to survive a, a increasingly <laughs> tough world okay um, actually there is a very controversial topic nowadays there is a new trend happening in bollywood the boycott trend <laughs> you want to at the add anything to it or you want to comment is is it okay uh, i also want to add to that question uh, so largely digital plays a huge role in this especially some of the platforms uh, when you look at it you know as an artist you know how fair unfair does it appear to you uh i caught trend you know oh the boy see you know i'm not really equipped to answer this question because i'm not a real bollywood person i've acted in 100 films but i'm not neither an a lister neither am i doing all the movies that i've been doing i've just been as you might have seen i was doing that dance i was hiding in shape you know that was like what 80s so it's i don't know i and frankly i i came across something called trans surfing i don't know if anybody is familiar with trans surfing anyway it's a new concept my son my 28 year old son he shared it with me so it seems like you know information ek taraf se aise aata hai and then there is another information which goes the other way so this constant polarization of information somebody is left somebody is right somebody is left of left somebody is right of right and you always have to take a stand and we all did because somewhere we are human you are part of a society you take a stand you know i like him i don't like her i don't. but there is an option there is an option of ignoring as a young girl uh, my bua used to tell me a lot and in our bengali home it was to call ig ig so yeah ig ig and with a little i so even when my children were young i used to you know if something would happen i would say ig so when trans surfing happened you can google it <laughs> because that's what i did i understood the power of being able to say no i uh, have a choice i choose to ignore it so if everyone is saying boycott or not boycott i don't have to take a stand i am well a kind of author or actor my job is um, limited to that extent and i don't want to get into that i know there is a big thing and i'm not being politically correct right i'm just feel that i choose to ignore that uh, 
Uh, before I came on stage, you know, I had six requests that they also want to ask questions. So I have that in mind as well. But before that, quickly, you know, in your uh, course of journey uh, in the entertainment world, uh, what are some of the memories that you really hold on to, if you could share, you know? I know it's, it's not easy, it's, yeah, but it's, yes, it's, but just like what we You know, why don't to. we do it when you, well, let them ask particular questions and I will, you know, I'll okay. be able to sure, sure. streamline it. Otherwise it will be very... Okay. Yes, uh, Shrabanti and then uh, the gentleman. What are the kind of thanks? What are the kind of roles or characters that attracted you the most over your uh, period of performing, both on television and in films? Quirky. <laughs> yeah, quirky. Because I've always, I just didn't want to be one type. And you know, a heroine has a shelf life. Yes. You know, they're just heroines. So in our times, there was a vamp, and I would, in King Uncle, and many of you may have seen it, or you were, you know. I played a horrible vamp. I'm a terrible woman. I, I torture little children. Scary. So she's completely different from this very cute, affable, silly kitty. So the completely polar opposites. And that's what attracted me. Because I think, you know, uh, I've always wanted to uh, do something different and break out of a mold when I was, I was always struggling uh, for people to define me. And my parents lost the case because they couldn't. And I just chose not to be in the IAS because in my time, that was the thing to do, you know? And because I was a good student, so they thought, and then to get into Bombay and then struggle and then, you know, do all these kind of things. But that quirk, my desire, my, I, I knew instantly with great clarity that this was my journey from a very young age. So I was, I just followed my path. I just followed my instinct. I didn't waver. For the longest time, I've been a running actor. And a running actor means I didn't do anything else for a living. I mean, writing and all has just been very recent. My first book, Me and Juhi Baby, was published in 2018. That's four years ago. Yes. But I did write two plays which have not been published because I was very shy. But we performed it at Prithvi. It did very well also. Yes. So to answer your question, I've always looked for, I mean, I can't say you know, crash the glass ceiling or something as grand as that. But I've always tried to uh, stretch myself and not become, you know, a smaller version of myself. I just wanted to always do something quirky. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, you know, you've uh, regaled the audience. I'm here. Here. You regaled the audience as a running actor. You mentioned that. But for a lot of people on the audience, the impact of Karamchand and US Kitty was so amazing that even, you know, decades later, when it's available on OTT and platforms, the, the viewer connect with you is fantastic, right? So I wanted to ask you, what now when you reflect back on your journey as an actor, what do you think was the ingredient that made that show so amazing and give you this forever lifetime identity? And as a performance, if you look at your career of the last few decades, what's a performance that you gave for whatever reason that's really close to your heart? Because for us, it's Kitty, you know, it's, it's number one, two, three, four, five, and then comes six, seven, eight, whatever, right? But for you, uh, that one performance that you hold very close to your heart, and, and if you could just share why. So initially, it's more about why Kitty is so, uh, you know, why was it right? Was it the team? Was it just the energy of that initial... Uh, team coming together because the longevity of the content that you were able to make, be it with uh, Karamchand, with Spankhaj, or be it you and your performance, be it the director, something must have been amazing that that content has such longevity. You know, it's it's funny you say this because it just was quite accidental. So Pankaj Kapoor and I, we were uh, we were acting in a play and Pankaj had been cast. He was uh, three, four years senior to me at the NSD, and he's also been my teacher. But we were acting uh, in a play, and he was cast by Pankaj Parashar. And I've told this story to death, but I'm going to tell it to you yet once more. So we, one day he came to the uh, rehearsal place, and he had very strange hair, you know, Pankaj Parashar, the director. And I said, why do you have hair which looks like a cauliflower? 
ही वॉज वेरी ऑफेंडेड ही टोल पंकज कपूर मैं इसको लेने वाला था पर शी कॉल माई है कॉलीफ्लावर यंग पंकज से लुक प्लीज गो एंड से सॉरी टू हेम आई से से सॉरी टू हेम इसे क्यों बोला उसके बाल कॉलीफ्लावर जैसे लगते हैं सो आई वॉन्टेड लाइक कॉलीफ्लावर मन ही मन में कह रही थी अभी भी कॉलीफ्लावर ही लग रहा है बट आई डेंट से दैट एंड आई गॉट द जॉब ओके इट वॉज एज सिंपल एज दैट हैविंग सेट दैट इट वॉज अ मैजिकल टाइम बिकॉज subsequently with all when when uh, ekta kapoor came with her angel investment and um, uh, venture capital words that you know even i've been a producer i had no clue about hum log bhai khata mein karte the ab accountant chala jata tha producer ke paas and she came into the line and she corporatized it everything and she said tam in tam all those things which we had no clue about we were just interested in our scripts and performance so at that time what happened then there was only 39 episodes over 3 years now with ekta this the 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 benchmark is 5000 episodes so can you imagine the times when it was only 39 episodes which created an impact versus something which is 5000 episodes so can you see what has happened to the culture the society the time to zamane mein itna hi tha pet bhar jata tha 8 10 30 i think on a wednesday it used to come and people would just enjoy and it was like a delicate uh, uh, dessert you know everybody just ate a little bit of it and pet bhar jata tha us zamane mein now there is a there is a buffet which is this is so much food it's like a roman feast of content the images of a content itna khana hai ki log and now people are saying okay this is there is a plethora of things to choose from so i think the success was partly due to the times due to the magic of uh, the 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 energies that we all shared we were friends despite the cauliflower incident we were friends and mujhe lagta hai isliye wo us samay acha yeah that's all i can say i don't know and the one performance uh, that's close just, i actually asked uh, a, a performance that's close to your heart which uh, for whatever reasons uh, you can share with us that's something that really appeals to you so something I, that you've done so i have done something called kab tak pukaru i don't know if any of you have seen that anybody has seen kab tak pukaru Okay, so this was Rangi Raga, who is a very famous novelist, many many awarded novelist. Unki ek story thi kab tak pukaru? It was about the Gadia Lohars of Lohar. They were nuts, nut. They travel with their they are they are homeless. So they carry they tra travel in their wagons. So it was a story of Pankaj Kapoor, me and Pallavi Joshi, the three of us. And this woman is madly in love with her husband pankaj kapoor but she develops a, a um sexually trans std you know disease and then she finds this young pallavi joshi and marries her husband to her because she loves her husband so much it was of course very layered so that was a character and i was also the producer of that show to pere baal aise hote the you know like little, little things like how gypsies are and for 3 4 5 days it wouldn't be washed it would be like this and i would be doing my lines and saying sabko chai mili hai ki nahi we're talking about 87 so like many many years ago so that that was a performance very close to my heart of uh, pyari of kab tak pukaru okay karan uh, final question yes so one last question you have achieved so much what's next from here oh what what am i doing next uh next um i am going to be coming soon in uh, in a lakshman utekar film that i play sara ali khan's mother so i see the, the character kya hai sara ali khan's mother and then <laughs> because mostly films uh, though it is interesting it, but it's not usually layered i'm just doing a film called covid stories with z z z studio it's a very nice uh, very emotional subject about a woman a bengali woman of chitranjan park and her covid story then i'm doing another very interesting large short film called fedora's wrinkles where i play fedora and she is a 70 year old prostitute of mumbai and her body has given way she's old and i of course add added a lot of age to her but she has to do it because she needs uh, her daru her chicken and she needs medicines for her heart so that was a very uh, a difficult and difficult thing but that's what i am doing in terms of the work all right round of applause for uh, krishnamurti mukherjee thank you so much uh, for joining us and talking to us i will request karan to uh, 
So we'll take a quick uh, wrap up break for five minutes, then we'll reconvene for the awards. Thank you, everyone. So.